Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the uses of cells, alkaline hydrogen fuel cells, acidic hydrogen fuel cells, and then the pros and cons of hydrogen fuel cells before finally we'll summarise. In other videos we've talked about the chemistry of chemical cells, how they work and how they involve redox reactions. They're used a lot in everyday life. The first example are non-rechargeable cells. You'll probably have called these batteries your whole life, and they power everything from remotes to games consoles, and even things like doorbells. They work by a chemical reaction, usually between zinc and ammonium ions. Remember that when we have the two redox reactions laid out like this, with the more negative standard electrode potential on the top, we can use an anti-clockwise rule to decide how the reaction will happen. And that leads to this reaction equation here, where zinc reacts with ammonia to form zinc ions and ammonium plus hydrogen gas. The way these cells work is to effectively have one of the half cells in a central ring in the middle of the battery and the other of the half cells on the outer end of the battery. When they're put in a device, there is then a connection between the positive end, the connection to the positive terminal, and the negative end, the connection to the negative terminal. Electrons can flow and the reaction will start to happen and the battery will discharge. This is how they give us electrical energy and when all of the chemicals have reacted fully, they are then spent and disposed of because they cannot provide any more electrical energy. We can compare normal batteries or cells to rechargeable cells. For example, here's a picture of a car battery. In science, the difference between a battery and a cell is that a battery contains many cells. Each one of these things you can see here in the picture is a cell and when we stack them back to back to increase the voltage they can give we've made a battery. Rechargeable cells work in very similar ways to non-rechargeable cells. Chemicals react and generate electricity. However the difference comes is that with these chemical reactions when we apply a potential difference so for example when we plug them in to charge them and we apply a voltage in the opposite direction to the direction in which it was discharging then the chemicals regenerate. This opposite voltage pushes the reaction back the other way. Some examples of this include nickel and cadmium batteries usually shown as NICAD and these are used as rechargeable batteries in things like remote controls and toys. Lithium ion batteries are lightweight and they are used in laptops and mobile telephones. The risks, especially from lithium ion batteries, are that they're toxic if ingested and have also been known to malfunction and explode under the wrong conditions. We have to weigh up these risks against how useful it is to be able to use these batteries and take according precautions. In all the examples we've looked at so far, we've had a stock of chemicals which have been reacting and then either disposed of or recharged. But instead of this, fuel cells provide another way to generate electricity. Fuel cells are externally supplied with the chemicals they need for the reaction. Because of this, the cells can provide electrical energy for as long as they are supplied with fuel. They never run out of charge as long as they have enough fuel. Alkaline hydrogen fuel cells are one particular type of hydrogen fuel cell. They look something like this, and we'll continue to add to this diagram as we explain what's going on. So firstly, the fuels which flow in are hydrogen, H2 gas, and oxygen, O2 gas. These react within the cell and form water in the chemical reaction that generates electricity. We effectively have two half cells in this system, one half cell that deals with the reaction with hydrogen and one half cell that deals with the reaction with oxygen. We have an electrolyte, this is something that can carry charge, that connects the two. It connects the two in an alkaline fuel cell by facilitating the flow of OH- ions from the oxygen end of the fuel cell towards the hydrogen end. And it's because this material we fill it with, the electrolyte, contains a high number of OH ions within it, 
This makes it alkaline, and so it's an alkaline hydrogen fuel cell. The electrolyte is the only part of the fuel cell that remains in there and may need to be occasionally replaced. The half cell equations for this system are as follows. On the hydrogen side of the electrode, which is the more negative, so forms the negative terminal in this system, so favours the backward reaction, and we have hydrogen combining with the OH- that's come across from the oxygen in the electrolyte to form water and two electrons. On the other hand, the oxygen side has a more positive standard electrode potential, so this makes it the positive electrode. Here, the reaction favours the right-hand direction, and we have oxygen combining with water and two electrons to form the OH- ions, which then fuel the other side's reaction. By combining these two equations, so we have the oxidation of hydrogen and the reduction of the oxygen, we can form the full equation for the hydrogen fuel cell, which you need to know. Here we've just taken everything and put it together into one equation without the electrons. So we've taken the oxygen and the water here and here to form these parts of the equation and we've taken the hydrogen because this reaction goes from right to left and the OH- ions and then the products are the OH- ions formed on the oxygen side and the water formed on the hydrogen side. At this point, we can now cancel things that appear on both sides of the equation. So both of the OH- ions cancel on each side, and one of the water molecules will cancel on the left side, with one of the water molecules on the right-hand side. So the full equation is given by oxygen, half a mole of O2, combining with hydrogen to form water. This is why fuel cells are seen as a green source of energy. Their only waste product that they directly generate is water, which is not harmful to the environment. The fuel doesn't have to be hydrogen either. Similar reactions to the one above can take place as long as it is a hydrogen-rich fuel, for example methanol, which can also reduce the oxygen and form water. As well as alkaline hydrogen fuel cells, we can have acidic hydrogen fuel cells. Instead of having an alkaline electrolyte, we have an acidic electrolyte, and it's H plus ions that flow between the two terminals to connect the different sides of the reaction. The cells will look very similar, and they're set up in more or less the same way, where hydrogen flows into one terminal, that's hydrogen gas which flows in as fuel, Oxygen flows in to the other terminal, and the only waste product that flows out is water. This time, however, the direction of ion movement in the electrolyte is the opposite way round, and it's positive H plus ions which are moving from the hydrogen side of the fuel cell to the oxygen side. Let's have a look at the reactions that go on in the acidic hydrogen fuel cell. This time there are no OH- ions present, and the hydrogen gas just breaks down into H plus ions and two electrons. The oxygen combines with these H plus ions and the two electrons to form the water. It's a much more simple reaction equation. The full equation is given by combining these, so we have the oxygen and the two H plus from this reaction here, forming this part of it, and the hydrogen being the other reactant. The products are then the H plus ions and the water generated. We can then cancel the H plus ions because they appear on both sides of the equation, and we're left with the final full equation, which is now the same as before, oxygen combining with hydrogen to form water. As with the alkaline fuel cells, the fuel doesn't have to be hydrogen gas. We can have similar reactions take place with hydrogen-rich fuels, like methanol. Now we know how hydrogen fuel cells work, we need to think about the advantages and disadvantages of them. The main advantages of hydrogen fuel cells, and the reason why they're becoming more popular, is that they're more efficient than burning fossil fuels. Also, they only release water as a waste product into the environment, which is not harmful compared to carbon dioxide, which is. 
The main disadvantage or drawback of hydrogen fuel cells is that we need energy to build them and energy is also required to produce the hydrogen that they use as fuel. This energy has to come from somewhere and it still comes from fossil fuels. So hydrogen fuel cells are not as environmentally friendly as they appear at first sight. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.